there are some people that would disagree with me, but I've just found over and over and over again that the spiritual journey is, at the heart of it, it's all about purification. Right? Um, it's got a bit of a bad rap in some religious circles, but really it is about purification because what you are is already complete. All right? And so in a sense, we never ever truly attain anything new. An attainment of something new, in a sense, is a rediscovery. Discover, you uncover, you separate the dirt, the filth, the associations out from the truth. You cleanse, you purify. Every time you purify that awareness, every time you separate that awareness from the elements it has become associated with or attached to, or you detach the elements from that awareness, that awareness purifies itself. And again, the separation thing is just semantics because you can't separate anything. So don't worry about it. Like, oh, this is a separation practice. We're all, we're everything. Yes, you are, but you can't realize that from the point of view of being the body. You just can't. Or the point of view of being a person. You just can't. You got to go beyond. You got to go beyond the mind stuff. And one of the most effective direct ways, pragmatic ways to do that is to separate yourself from everything. Don't make this into a, it's not a philosophy. It's not a philosoph philosophical stance to take towards life and the people that you meet and the, and the jobs that you do and your duties and honors. It's just a practice. So it's not about thinking in terms of separation. It's about distinguishing making distinction clear distinction discerning between what you are and what you're not oh but aren't we everything wherever? yes but if you take the route of i'm not this and i'm not this and i'm not this and i'm not this you can very quickly arguably most directly most fast realize unity so separation separating your true self from your false self is actually a way into unity because again, unity is not something that you will create. It's not an experience that you're going to one day have. It's the nature of things. It's the substratum of things, if you will. It's just the isness of things. You can't, you can't undo it. You can, it doesn't matter what you think. You can have a million separation thoughts and feelings every single minute for the rest of your life, and it would not put a single change or dent in absolute, infinite, unified, one reality. So it doesn't matter what you do, you see, in terms of spiritual practice, like you can't separate. So sep try to separate that essence, the essential primordial knowingness, that super, super, super subtle, ultimately becomes experientially, becomes subtler and subtler and subtler and subtler and subtler and subtler. And, subtler. and every time you think it's the subtlest, the subtler. So if you keep going subtler, you continue to purify, you become subtler, you become pure. Your awareness starts to purify itself. Its its lens, its filter is purifying itself. So that perception becomes more and more transparent to the nature of things as they already always inevitably, inescapably, changelessly are. So separate your way into unity, spiritually speaking. Again, not a dogmatic belief, not a philosophy, not a relationship advice, just a spiritual direct path practice. Separate yourself from everything. Separate everything out from yourself. And you, when you hit what's left, okay, and, and the final stage of this, there's many sort of subtleties, subtleties, subtleties within the realm of awareness, within the realm of consciousness. There's many, many, many degrees of subtlety. And every time it's more spacious, it's more subtle, it's more indescribable. It has less and less to do with space and time and people and relationships and thoughts and conventional reality. The relationship to conventional reality seems to be less and less bridgeable. It's like inexpressible. Mm. It's got nothing to do with conventional ways of relating and believing in reality. This is why spiritual practice needs to be taken at your own pace and deconstructing and, and separating these false elements out and, and making contact with those truer levels of your being, those more transparent levels, closer to the truth. It has to be done at your own pacing, but do, I suggest you do it. You, you meditate, you try this out.
but it becomes less and less conventional. So you become less and less human, actually experientially less and less human without suppressing anything, without avoiding anything, without denying anything, without not being willing to acknowledge anything. Nevertheless, you, your knowledge of yourself, your direct experience of isness of life, of existence, of being, of truth, becomes so refined, so subtle, that it's like two completely different worlds. Again, the separation element there, the apparent separation element. Because more and more your experiences that conventional reality doesn't really have any existence. All that's real is the state of awareness itself. And it has many states and flavors and changes and nuances and ways in which it can experience itself and filters and subtleties and levels up to a certain point. The highest level has no levels. Ironically, it's the highest level, but it has no levels because it's, it's the one in its most primordial, original, absolute, stateless state. And you can get there by separating yourself out in your spiritual inquiry, your meditation, your contemplation, from everything that you can perceive. What typically happens initially when we start to inquire and we realize that, oh, I'm not this, I'm not this perception, I'm also not this perception, I'm also not this thought, I am also not this emotion. I have the emotion, nothing wrong with it, but I'm not, it's not what I am. It's just what appears, it's just part of the canvas of life. Again, totally allowed, totally accepted, nothing to push, we don't have to push anything away for spiritual practice. Separating yourself is not actually, has nothing to do with not experiencing certain things. Um, so you can have a raging emotional state, you can have a raging trigger come up and still separate yourself from that trigger without denying the trigger. So actually, by separating yourself from the trigger, you can allow the trigger to be as it is. So it's also a more holistic path in most ways, even though it sounds to the service minded people like a practice of separation, like a philosophy of separation. It's not. Look beyond the service of separation, both in politics and in spiritual practice and your thoughts and your emotions and your perceptions.